Hi, welcome to the 10 Minute Toolkit. I'm Susan. I'm Dan. And with Linda, we're going to go through an activity that uh, Dan's going to lead. So show us what you got. Awesome. Thanks, Susan. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And we're going to bring up an activity. Uh, can you guys see my screen OK? Just to make sure. All right, awesome. Yes. So this activity is called To Find Your Vision. And just for a little bit of context to set this one up, what I love about this exercise is I've done this for literally like, I think the last two decades. <laughs> I've applied it in lots of different scenarios. So in some cases you can apply it to individuals that are a part of a training program or training experience for them to think about their own current state versus where they want to go in terms of goal setting. Uh, you can also apply this in a team setting. So thinking about where a team is today versus where a team wants to get to tomorrow. And then also, even if you zoom out further, you can apply this to a community project. So where's the community today versus where do we want our community to evolve to tomorrow? So that's what the, the sort of fun side of this activity is it really can be uh, adapted to a lot of different scenarios and context. So the way that this works, the ultimate goal is for us to really take some time and reflect on our current state of being. And so I'm gonna pose a few sort of prompting questions for Susan and Linda to reflect on. Uh, and we're gonna be on the left side of the chart right now where it says the present character. So you could hand this out if you were in person. If you're online, you could share it as a whiteboard and have people write in some of their responses to the experience as well. So uh, to kick us off, I'm gonna ask uh, Susan, if you were to describe yourself today in three adjectives, what three adjectives would you use? Creative, reflective, and, you know, this doesn't have anything to do with vision, but today I'm really happy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we're glad you're happy. <laughs> That's good. All right, Linda, I'm going to ask you uh, some prompting questions. So my question is, name three roles that you play, three roles or hats that you wear in your life today. Um, mother, grandmother, friend. Awesome. Thanks, Linda. All right, so back to you, Susan. All right, so identify two or three habits that you have. The two or three habits that you have that you do maybe daily or weekly? Workout, art of some kind. It's another habit. Um, read. Awesome. Thanks, Susan. All right. And then, Linda, I'll ask you one last prompting question, which is two or three achievements that you're most proud of recently. And these could be little achievements or big achievements or anything in between. Um, I was recently asked to write some curriculum for our general church, and that's feels good. Um, I sold one of my paintings last week, and that always is a nice um, experience. And, that's awesome. Congratulations. Um, let's see. Gosh, I don't have very many achievements these days. I guess some days it's just getting up and and uh, being here because I have so many health issues. So, Linda, I, I really appreciate you adding that third one because, again, so often when we get asked the question, identify some achievements or things that you would identify as successes, we often as individuals, we think, try to like think the big things. But oftentimes it's the little things that form the habits that help us to be successful in achieving those other things. So I'm glad you mentioned that last one. <laughs> um, so again, you can keep going down a list of prompting statements, but when I, I like to do it where you think about adjectives, you think about roles that you play. Sometimes I'll play the exercise where you say, I am, and then you fill in the blank and you have everyone in the room sort of go around the circle and go around multiple times thinking about all the different ways that they would describe themselves or different parts of their identity. Then I say, okay, we're gonna fast forward in time, a set time. So I might say, we're gonna fast forward five to 10 years from now. Okay, so five, let's say five years for today's exercise. So fast forward in five years, and Susan, I want you to think about five years from today, what are three adjectives that you want others to use when describing you? Thoughtful, inspiring, and caring. Awesome. And then Linda, what would be three roles? So again, five years from now, three roles that you either want to continue playing or that you want to play in the future. Artist, 
uh, mother and grandmother. Awesome. All right, back to you, Susan. So in the future, five years from today, what are three habits that you would like to either continue or you would like to develop? I want to continue to work on glass projects, stained glass mosaic. I want to continue to write, so that's all creative expression. Continue to do practices that are healthy for self. Um, and I want to be more zen-like and more <laughs> centered. <laughs> awesome, right, well, what would it look like to be more zen-like? What would be a habit that you could, you could put into play? Oh, well, that's taking more quiet time, more meditation, uh, more pauses during difficult challenges to say what's really going on here or take a breath, let go. Awesome. Okay, cool. So again, you kind of get the point where I give you some prompting statements as we fast forward in time and think about where we want to go. The third part of the exercise is right down the middle. So here we start to reflect on if you look at your current state today, and then where you want to go, those adjectives you want people to use to describe you, the roles that you want to play or continue to play, the habits that you want to continue or develop over time. You could add things into the future, a future achievements that you want to make. You could think about um, all sorts of dreams that you want to accomplish at a certain point. Right down the center, what I challenge people to think of is, what is one thing, just one thing, that you can stop doing today that will move you in the direction of that desired future state. Did you say stop doing? Stop doing, yep. Okay. Then one thing that you'll start doing, so mm -hmm. you aren't doing it today, but you should start doing it so you can get into that um, future state. So for example, like Susan, we talked about being more in a meditative state. So here's an example where you might say, you know what, I'm gonna start scheduling like 15 minutes a day for just quiet meditation. Um, and then one thing that you want to continue doing to move you in the direction, again, of where you want to be. So, and Linda, in the example that you shared in terms of art, it would be, I'm going to continue to work at my art, right, in order to continue moving in that direction and continue to grow my art uh, mm -hmm. down the road. So the idea is that sometimes we become so bogged down in the tasks, the action steps, the habits that it's going to take to get us from where we are to where we want to be, that it's so overwhelming that we don't take any action. We don't gain mm -hmm. momentum in the direction of our goals. Mm -hmm. This exercise, what I like to emphasize is just picking one thing. And oftentimes, I just read this recently, what's really helpful is if you can tack one of those things, one of those new action items onto an existing habit, right? Because from a human behavior standpoint, what's interesting is if we're doing something from scratch, brand new, we sometimes lose our motivation over time. Think about New Year's resolutions that you might set at the beginning of January, a few weeks pass, and you let it go by the wayside, versus attaching it to something that you're already doing. So for example, like Susan, when you, you talk about writing today, maybe what you do is you add 10 minutes of meditation time before you start writing. Mm -hmm. You've tacked it onto something that you're already getting pleasure from, that you enjoy, that you're good at, you're getting energy, and now you're adding on this new element which is gonna further fuel you in the direction of what you want to achieve. So this exercise is really cool in the sense that it helps you to think about where you are today and do some self-reflection. Again, great for teams, great for communities to also think about where are we today and what kind of community do we want to ultimately be living in? And what are those things that we can stop, start and continue to strengthen and grow our communities? I wanna show you one more thing, a little bonus resource here. So when you think about goal setting, a lot of times we think about action steps to achieve our goals. And what I wanna show you here is not just the action step mapping, but mapping our relationships too, okay? So thinking about put your goal down, break it down into smaller pieces. What are the specific steps that are gonna help you move from where you are to where you wanna go? And then start thinking about who's in your web of support today? What relationships do you have? that can help you with each individual milestone or action step to get to that goal. And if you nice. have somebody that comes to mind, one thing I want you to think about is, who can you rely on in your current network to help you build your network? In other words, who do you know that can help introduce you to somebody else that would help you be successful? So for example, uh, Susan, I'll ask you a quick question. So if, in terms of art, if you were to be thinking about exploring more glass art, right? Do you know other artists in the glass art space that you could connect to that maybe you're not currently connected to today? Yes. 
So that would be a good example of like how you can expand your network, challenge your way of growing in that particular skill, look at it from a different perspective, different set of experiences, and again, still stay aligned to where you ultimately want to go. So again, a cool way of just breaking your, your goals down into action steps and relationship networks. Um, so again, a couple of quick tools, a couple of quick activities um, to help you think about both goal setting and just personal achievement. Nice. So uh, I loved this particular activity, Dan, so much that it's in great group leaders. I did a little shifting. We put the personal version of the person you want are now and the person you want to be in this one. And the second volume of great group leaders is the community version of what does the community look like and what can it be and what are the steps we take uh, to move it from point A to point B. Yeah. It's a great, great tool. And uh, Dan shared this with me a long time ago. Well, shared it with me somewhere in the past and I've gotten to use it a few times and it works really well. Nice. Thank you. Uh, all right, so unless there's other comments, we'll just say like, subscribe, tell others about this because we've tried to bring tools that you can use with your colleagues and in your groups. Um, and we're glad Linda was here so that we could demo this uh, for you so you okay. can see how it goes. Thank you. Thanks so much, Linda. Thanks, Have a good day. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>